Okay, I'm over at Protein Database's uh, website, and what I want to do today is use some of the viewer applications that are here to talk about protein structure a little bit. And I'm going to do it in the context of a protein that we've mentioned or are going to mention in lab fairly soon called catalase. Uh, catalase is an enzyme. It speeds up the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen gas. And if you've ever put hydrogen peroxide on a cut and seen those little bubbles, that's the oxygen gas uh, that's produced by the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is uh, search for a uh, particular protein. So I'm going to go up to the search window and I'm going to search for catalase. So I'm going to type in C-A-T-A L-A-S-E, and hit the little magnifying glass, and we are in luck because catalase was one of the molecules of the month on this particular website. So I'm going to click on catalase, and what I get here is a little bit of a narrative about catalase and some cool pictures and things like that that you can look at on your own if you want. But I'm going to go right to the catalase and I'm going to select this one over here. This is catalase that's found in beef liver cells. So it's similar to the kind of catalase that we have in our cells. In lab, we're going to look at catalase that's produced by potatoes. Turns out that just about all living things produce this particular enzyme. So I'm going to click on the link and open that up. Uh, yes, I do want to run Java. And we're going to look at catalase using a, an applet, which is called JMOL, and it allows us to look at the three-dimensional shape of this particular enzyme. And so rather than look at this little window, I'm going to hit uh, open up the detailed view which shows me a little bit more than I really want to know about where this uh, particular uh, information is from. And here I'm going to view in JMOL. J stands for Java, by the way. And up will come a bigger version of my enzyme. Now, one of the interesting things about proteins, of course, is that they have several different levels of protein structure, and that's what I want to use this particular enzyme to look at. So I'm going to look first at primary structure, which of course is the arrangement of the amino acids in your protein, kind of like the arrangement of boxcars in a train. And I'm going to switch my color setting here from secondary structure to by amino acid. And now when I look up here, I see oh, about 20 different colors, and each of the different colors represents a different amino acid. And if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that the different amino acids are arranged along, like in a, in a long chain. Uh, these uh, broader areas we'll talk about in just a little bit. So this is primary structure, the arrangement of the amino acids in your proteins. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my secondary structure view. Do that. And I'm going to zoom, whoops, zoom back out again. And you'll notice there are several different colors that are shown here. Uh, if you look at the pink areas, they're, co they're coiled. Those are what are called alpha helices. And those area, the areas of the protein that have to be really strong and inflexible will have lots of these alpha helices. Um, and if I click, come in a little bit closer, you can see how they're coiled like a helix. And they're very, very strong. Now, these other areas in orange are what are called pleated sheets. And the parts of the protein that have to be very flexible and elastic uh, will have tend to have pleated sheets. Proteins that are very, very elastic, like some of the proteins in our body, uh, will have lots of these pleated sheets and very, very few of these alpha helices. Little snake-like guys or other areas where you just have amino acids joined together to connect different parts of the protein. So this is secondary structure. In other words, what's happened here is that the primary structure, and I can switch to that just for a second, 
The primary structure has just folded to give these complicated sheets depending on, and helices depending on how the amino acids interact with each other. So there's my secondary structure again. Whoops. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Now, the secondary structure, the coils or the pleated sheets, they can fold in very complicated ways depending on how the protein interacts with the water and its environment. So, and that interaction is what is called tertiary structure. It's kind of like taking a slinky, which itself is coiled, and then kind of tangling all those coils up. And so that's tertiary structure. And that has to do with how the secondary structure interacts with water. And so I'm going to come down here to this very forbidding looking word, hydrophobicity. You might know hydrophilic and hydrophobic. Well, proteins have some areas which behave like lipids in that they're hydrophobic. And those are these red areas here. The blue areas are charged and they are attracted to water, so they're hydrophilic. So depending on you know what part of the protein you're in, the protein will fold in different ways depending on how it interacts with water. And the general tendency is for the hydrophilic parts in blue shown here uh, to be more to the outside where they can interact with the water. The hydrophobic parts in red would tend to be more to the inside. They're more like fats or oils. And so this complex interaction gives rise to the third level of protein structure or tertiary structure. Tertiary, of course, meaning three. Well, of course, it gets even better because there's a fourth level of protein structure, which is, which is called quaternary structure. Quaternary meaning fourth. And that comes about when you have a protein that itself is made up of several smaller proteins. And we can check whether that's the case for catal this catalase by switching to the chain view. And if there's one chain, you'll just get a single color in your structure up here, but if there's several chains, you'll get several different colors shown. And so let's click on that. And we can see there's one chain that's purple, another one that's blue. And so that tells us that this catalase has a quaternary structure, and it happens to be made out of two smaller proteins that are bound together. If you notice, uh, one other little thing that shows up really nicely here, if I can make this a little bit bigger. Notice right here there uh, is another set of molecules. Those are other little groups that are associated with the protein that uh, enhance the protein's ability to function. Hemoglobin has something similar where it has what's called a heme group that has the iron atoms that are necessary for the functioning of the hemoglobin. And so we have something like that going on here. I'm not sure if there's a trace element involved here and how this particular structure works, but I just thought I'd show it while I was here. Well, that kind of gives a quick view of this uh, wonderful uh, PDB site and JMO, and also showing the different levels of protein structure. We started out with the sequence of amino acids being the primary structure, and so I'll just go back to that really quickly. Then we had secondary structure, how the primary structure folds because of how amino acids interact with each other, and so that's the secondary structure. We had the tertiary structure, which depends on how the secondary structure interacts with water. So we had these areas that are hydrophilic, they're attracted to water, these other areas that are hydrophobic. And then finally, we had the quaternary structure, where you have, in this case, a protein that's made out of two smaller proteins that are linked together. Okay, that's all we're going to do now. We'll probably have a little assignment related to this just so that you can have do work with some find a protein and investigate it. So this is also an introduction to the software and the website that we'll use for that particular assignment. Okay, feel free to email me or comment if you have any particular questions and you might want to play this particular uh, 
video several times and then head on over to www.pdb.org and you can explore some of these links for yourself. Okay, thank you. Talk to you later.